that is the thing. People always used to say like, oh, I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit. I'm like, what have you done to make you want to quit? Or what have you not done yeah. to make you want to quit? Yeah, you, yeah. You're not getting feedback. You're not out and about. You're not in the cypher coming off stage with that buzz. Like, I killed that. Do you know what I mean? Like, that feeling. Mm. The people that often quit were the, not, they were the people that weren't out and about. The killer, 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 THTC, the UK's leading ethical streetwear label. Organically grown and ethically built garments from hemp, organic cotton and other sustainable materials. 2019 is their 20th anniversary year. Join me with THTC as a Killer Keller podcast sponsor celebrating music, social activism, hemp and street culture. THTC, eco-fashion redefined since 1999. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Killer Keller Podcast. Welcome. Welcome to the Keller Dome, live and direct. Central London, as central as you need to be. Let me just check. Working, all right. So we are, in effect, just checking the sound before we start asking any questions. So our lights on now, boom. Um, big shout out to Graffiti King inside the place each and every time. Got a very special guest in for the UK Pop Fraternity. Not only does he rhyme, not only does he own his own products, not only is he a beat maker, not only is he a graph writer, not only is he a good friend of mine, this is Oliver Sutton. What are you saying, my brother? Easy. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, not bad. Thanks for having me in, man. Yeah, man. Wow. I mean, what a time to be... Uh, I know. Huh? Crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Releasing music is not an easy task at the moment, right? Yeah. It's been weird because I put out more than I have for years this year. Because I've had more time, yeah. but it's been weird not doing gigs and stuff to promote it. So I've just been doing as much sort of radio and podcasts and bits and bobs as I can. But mm. yeah, so that's why this is important. So thanks, man. No, my pleasure. Come on. Thank I think you. the last time we saw each other, I, in fact, I don't think there's ever been a time where I've actually spoken to you sober. <laughs> to be no. fair, we're always out partying or something. Yeah, I was chip shop, wasn't it? Yeah, chip shop. After uh, Son of Noise shoot, yeah. was that? Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't make it to the day, but I was... I was there for the little after party bit, playing some tunes. Big up Sun and Noise as well, and Chip Shop. Yes, always. Yes, yes. You're very much a, um, in the athleticism of hip hop, you're a competitor and you get involved and you do stuff. You and you're, you're active in every area. That's what I love about your quote unquote brand. Your person, you personify hip hop. Yeah, it's, 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 I don't know, it's strange saying to someone yesterday that. I do my radio show on Flex and someone messaged me going, oh, you rap? And I've been on there for like five years. So, do you know what I mean? And like, what do you mean? <laughs> That's just your first project. And I sent him to the band camp. He's like, oh, okay. Yeah, so okay. you've been doing things. So, But yeah, it's, it kind of blurs the lines of what I do. But yeah, I just enjoy all sorts of the culture, really. So yeah. and always have. comes way back to being a kid and mm. skating, I guess, and that sort of side of things where it all crossed over. Uh, well, yes, listen, for those of you who don't know, because we are going to get, we are going to start as means to go on right there, but I uh, urge you to go and check out all of a sudden. He's got a uh, new album, Sudden Impact, coming pretty soon. You've got the first dro one dropping this week. Yeah, new video out this week. There's one single out already, and then, yeah, we're just going to crack on and try and keep as many videos coming out for the, the coming months, hopefully, over yeah, the winter. That's fucking fire. That's fucking fire. Um... Yeah, and like I say, all rounder. If you go onto his Instagram, you can check out every uh, aspect of hip hop culture in activity. So what? So you got into it like early doors. You were a skater. Whereabouts did you come from? Croydon, born and bred in Croydon. Crocs, hold tight. Yeah, hold tight. The Cronk Squad. Uh, yeah, just grew up skating in Croydon and um, up in town. And yeah, through like the garage days, I was emceeing because everyone had decks and stuff. And mm. then, but also through skate videos, watching and listening to a lot of hip hop. So. Mm. Ended up going back to what I was into, like uh, hip hop wise, and also the whole sort of yeah, just everyone had the mic in the room, and it kind of just was just natural for me to just build and be around like decks and mics and stuff, and open mic circuits um, early on, like Deal Real and stuff like that, Speakers Corner and that. So mm, yeah, mm. met a lot of people I still roll with now. So those that era of uh, of record stores. Yeah, often missed a lot by us, like more refined heads. But I think the lack of it yeah. is quite telling of the of the culture and and sure. where music as a whole has gone. I Definitely. miss those times, man, because they used to have jams in there. In situations like this, where the shops are barely open yeah. and the clubs are shut, yeah. those would be the spots, right? Exactly, exactly. It's just we were talking about the other day about <clears throat> walk past Wild Pitch in Soho, where mm. where it was, and. Uh, 
we all used to do like open mics on a Monday in there and stuff. And so, so it was never competing with Deal Real, but that is, well, yeah, they were yeah, still yeah. popping. It was fucking busy, ram crowd, hype MCs, hungry to get on the mic. And mm. but yeah, maybe one day again get that sort of thing yeah. going. And you always used to meet people that, you know, Rodney was, in the end, Roots Manoeuvre. Yeah. You just bump into these people and you'd handshake based off a recommendation of a record or... Definitely. The, the guy behind the shop saying, you know who that is, you know who that is? No, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that was it. I met loads of, like, Mud Fam and, like, NASA and mm. Nova. I met through Deal Reel and I didn't even know who they were at the time. Yeah. And I think I was seeing this girl and her lodger in the house randomly grew up in North and knew Skinny and he had, I looked down the, the selection of LPs and on the end was the Mud Fam EP and I was like, what? And I saw the caricatures and I put the faces yeah, up, yeah. no way, that's yeah. them. Oh, man. But like, then I obviously still chat to them lot now, so same thing, just yeah, going back and meet people in random mm. ways back then and mm. pre-internet sort of YouTube and all that sort of stuff, you didn't really know who was who. Yeah, that's just, true, yeah. Yeah, just uh, lyrics and voices rather than faces, isn't it? So, I mean, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, the DNA of UK hip hop, um, in a in a real family tree kind of way, like you were saying about the garage MC era and stuff like that. They, like the likes of Skinny and Roots Maneuver, and you know that to to me the elder statesman of the the you know we're the kids. Yeah, these guys created the path, and it's incredible how that family tree transcends other UK music scenes and Definitely. cultures, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's, it goes way back to like, like we are saying with the graphing and that and when it was so crossed over between, which it obviously still is, but it's it's like your heroes, do you know what I mean? Stuff like as you get older, you realise who worked with who and mm. what sides of London sort of connected and how they connected. But I think it's, like you said, again, sort of Soho was kind of like, because it's so central, you did meet people from all over everywhere. Yeah, it was and a centralised place, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and it takes yeah. like all these years for you to kind of, oh, that was, he was with him, he was with like, and then as you travel more out of town, as things kind of spread it out and you have to go to yeah. different parts of town for different jams, you tap into different parts and different like scenes in different like parts of London and stuff. But, but yeah, it definitely goes way back to the, the fathers, mm. yeah, for sure. Makes me feel like Old. you're always in it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm joking. apart from that. Same. <laughs> it does make you feel like you can be anywhere and feel, relative, you know, geographically. Yeah. In a musical sense, yeah, you definitely. can feel the... the the vibe and you know that you're in a you know someone that might be there or yeah, you can for real you're never on your own no oh yeah no it's music scene definitely I'll ask you a question do you think like when it comes to music particularly scene based stuff like integrity is everything mm. it's, it's by far it's how far do you go in because it is a peer thing mm. like I'm arguably like, I think to myself, yo, I'm doing this to, I would do this to impress my peers. And that's, that's a thing with hip hop, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's like you want the forefathers to be like, yo, like, salute, he yeah. killed that. Yeah. You know? How far down the road do you need to feel settled with that in your head before you start thinking yourself, you know what, man, I, got, I need to rise above that. I, I need to challenge my peers and uh, I need to make some money. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like, because it's a real hard balance, isn't it? It's got that jazz quality where you can be in the mix with people and on the same level, yeah. you're inspired. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? The jazz thing, 100%. So I always think about that, how all your heroes work in the jazz thing. Do you know what I mean? If you look on like classic jazz albums at the credits, yeah, it's all the same thing. But yeah, I feel like the first step is getting the appreciation from these mm. people we're talking about. Do you know what I mean? And then that's kind of given me the confidence to push and try to bigger and better what I'm doing and make it more of a brand and a more organised um, sort of business rather than just mm. making songs, uh, being at jams. Now I feel like I've got a lot of the people that I've always looked up to behind me. It's encouraged me, especially Ty, rest in peace. Yeah, he was Ty. so supportive and yeah. like encouraging of like my stuff. Yeah. He just went sick at me. I'm probably, I've told this story loads of times, but 
he went mental at me to switch from so solid and chip shot one time for not embracing myself as an MC and like demanded the mass law took a photo of us like get a photo of me Swiss and all of a sudden now and like fucking no you're a bad boy MC and all this like don't listen to him Swiss like because I was going I'm a DJ I put on events mm. I do radio and but yeah that then people and then yeah now I feel yeah the next step is knowing that they're behind me I feel more confident going forward type yeah, thing yeah it is good isn't it definitely and I think Richly deserved to because he is right mm. he is right. right we all do it though man you know you underplay yourself because you're with your peers or because because you've got to a point where you feel you've hit the top of the glass yeah in in creativity and and uh, adding value to us yeah. si that side of you right? yeah for sure definitely I feel that, yeah, it's, it's a massive part of the whole thing is just getting that encouragement to be, yeah, sort of know that you're in the right place and you're on the right path yeah. and then it kind of opens up. The, you can see where you're going to go from there, do you know what I mean? It's a long game though, isn't it? Definitely. Because when you're thinking about the... My boy uh, Leke from Aerosol, he calls it cultural currency. Yeah, exactly. That's the way. It's a good way of putting it, actually. It's true, isn't it? Because you kind of like, you have to... There's... With, with with cultural stuff that it's like you can get into it but you have to earn your stripes yeah for and sure that, that's the thing that takes a long time isn't yeah. it yeah yeah for sure I feel that is the thing people always used to say like oh I'm going to quit I'm going to quit I'm like what have you done to make you want to quit or what have you not done yeah. to make you want to quit yeah, you, yeah. you're not getting feedback you're not out and about you're not in the cypher coming off stage with that buzz like I killed that do you know what I mean like <sighs> That feeling, mm. the people that often quit were the not they were the people that weren't out and about like representing in. Not that you have to be that, because some people just do it, especially now with the internet. Yeah, like producer wise and stuff, people just can be out in, sorry, and be out there yeah. fully just from connecting online and stuff. Especially like sort of middle aged family men that have that made beats forever, been close to quitting at times, and now are like producing some of the biggest underground hits. Do you oh, know what I mean? absolutely! But like, yeah. Um, but for like my path has always been I like to be out and about, mm. to be seen, to be heard, and to build with the people that I should, yeah, like I've looked up to along with the people that are coming up and try and be... Community shit. Yeah, try and be a, a guide and a help for them like I've had help and yeah. guidance in the past as well. Like the record store days were. You're in, the, like you say, getting off stage with adrenaline of doing a show or spitting a bar or, you know, anything that, that yeah. performance driven. And even doing a piece, if you've done a piece and you, you kind of look on it and you're like, yeah, I mean, that studio, the level of fulfillment that you get. Definitely. That shit is untangible. You can't, it, it, it's more, it's what distracts you from getting high and getting drunk and it keeps you inspired to do more, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. You need that. You need to kick up the bum from time to time to just make you like, yes, yeah, like know where you're at and where you're yeah. like going, do you know what I mean? Do you ever get those ones where you've woken up at around 10.30? No, I'm not woken up, that'd be a fucking lame, that'd be a lame morning start, wouldn't it? <laughs> right, you've got, you've got up at a regular time and you've been, to want of a better uh, term of it, you've been prick-teasing yourself for the last hour to get in the studio. Yeah. Knowing full well that you're going to have a banging time, but in your head you're just like, oh man, Oh man, oh man, and you're just getting pent up because you want to jump in and just do it because you know you'll be there for another eight hours. Yeah. But it's really hard to get that that click going. Do you ever have that? Yeah, I feel I feel much better in the mornings. I'm terrible at working at night on music. I mean, I'm alright at recording and stuff, um, but I feel yeah, the early morning I really get the buzz, especially when I got everything set up. I know I've got a stack of records there. Mm. If it's breakfast in the kitchen. Do you know what I mean? You haven't got to get out yeah, to the yeah, shop. Yeah, yeah. If you know this coffee, nice bit of munch, and you can sit there, put a record on that you could possibly sample, yeah. go through it while you eat, and then get straight in. But yeah. other days, yeah, it just it takes a minute. But I think it's good. I was talking about this with someone the other day about how sometimes the the break mm. makes you realise where you got to go with the next thing as well. Oh, that is so true. Um, being so being so deep in. The, the culture, as well as being a product and creating products and moving in a life circle. So you're getting paid. Yes, what I'm coming to. How can you create that circle? I think you already have, so you've got the answer to this. Can you create a circle that feeds each step of your 
lifestyle. So, all right, I've seen you do a, do a piece, mm. and I, I've been sat there thinking, well, I can't least I've been at it for like five hours now. You know what I mean? And I would be like, constantly looking at my phone, what's, what's that social media thing saying? What am I doing here? What's going on here? What yeah. this podcast next? You know what I mean? Mm. But you seem to like be able to do that, and then go and DJ, get paid from the DJ, and then go and back into your house, like you say, have a munch, do your morning stuff, then jump in the studio, work out some breaks that you want to sample. To, and it's, yeah. it's like, a, it's a convey about of cultural, um, using, using the natural resources to, to yeah. make income. Definitely. <laughs> I feel like that's almost like the week in general, because I'll be DJing sort of Thursday to Sunday. Yeah. And then Monday is like my Sunday. But I'm excited because I've got nothing on. So yeah. I'd be like, right, I'll make some beats today. Mm. And then it'd be like Tuesday, sort of admin stuff, maybe paint, um, do some artwork for an, um, for a flyer or something. Yeah. Um, and then Wednesday, kind of rest up a bit, do a little bit of homework and get the stuff records ready for the weekend and maybe do a shift in the record shop if I'm needed that week or whatever. But yeah, I feel like that, the week, the actual plan of the week has always helped me, like the gigs being sort of that chunk and then having that chunk to sort of mm. do my other stuff. and. My downtime, I enjoy like making beats. Do you know what I mean? So mm. it's, that's kind of been an easy part of it, especially like when my setup was smooth. But at the moment, I'm having a bit of technical difficulties. Classic when you've got more time, you can't actually. It <laughs> was anything, me the other but, day. <laughs> just, you know. Yeah, but um, yeah, the will. week's always been like this normal structure of the week, and I think I don't know. I've never worked Mondays, so I feel like that's always been knowing. I don't know. It's, kind of sly and cocky and a bit <laughs> out of mm -hmm. order to say in a way, but I kind of like that some people are having a sh rubbish day on a Monday and I'm just like, ah, what I can do what I like now. But you create that, I've, don't you? You yeah, create that. But I have a, or on the flip side, sometimes I'll be playing in a bar to no one yeah. on the other end of town, but the pay's all right. And yeah. I'm out all night late getting home, knackered, but where people will be partying. Yeah. So I gave up like a lot of weekends for ages. Now I don't know what to do on the weekends. Now everything's off. So. Yeah. Very strange. Yeah, it's a strange time. Isn't yeah. It? So you can sustain. Just about, yeah. What investing, I guess, is like something I didn't do yeah. enough at first. I wasn't investing in my craft as much as I should, but it's something I've, yeah, if I get a little bit of money, try and put yeah. some into some stock of some sort to keep a fund coming the in. Through. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a funny one, isn't it? I think I was the same. Um, get my war. Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, I think I was the same in that respect as well. Yeah, uh, you know, I could. In hindsight, mm. you know, it's not a regret. It's just more of a, uh, yeah. Well, I'm gonna just do a bit more of that now. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> it's the way. I need to uh, keep at it myself as well, especially these days because it's mm. a dead time of year, even when it is normal. Mm. You know what I mean, I often wonder what girlfriends think and boyfriends, you know, whatever side you flit on. I always wonder what girlfriends think of that lifestyle. They'll always say, "Oh yeah, it's fun. I love it." Mm. But you know, deep down, is like. Our aspirations, I mean, you know, and not only by guessing, because just because I like I like patterns, I like structure, um, and sometimes there's a spike of like, yeah, like oh, I've just had an idea. Okay, I've got time to do. Yeah, I'm gonna up the level on that one. Yeah, but it's all very self-obsessed and mm. work-related, and I often wonder what girls think of that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's I've had both sort of some that don't get it. I've been um, called foul words for just doing work before and like acting like I was neglecting them, even though the plan was to do that and they knew exactly what was going on. I just needed an hour to crack on. Yeah. yeah. And, and then there's some that yeah do really rate what you do and mm. kind of, or as in a similar profession, like self-employed creative stuff. That can so be quite know. dangerous, can't it? When two yeah. creatives are involved, because the money just somehow just doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> End up talking Balance. about your lack of income or your income. Get really hyped. I've got a job, and then like in a couple of weeks on, so yeah. both stressing at each other about yeah. lack of income. But I know it's that balance, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, because it's a it's a right, isn't it? It's a right. You you should have creativity in your day. Yeah, for sure. Without question. Definitely. It's especially now we're really lucky to be able to have these ways of expressing ourselves through mm. crazy times. Yeah, I feel really times. grateful for yeah the artwork and stuff that you can just zone out. Yeah, definitely. The uh, just going back to what you were saying earlier, when you were when you were coming up, 
and all the peers and all the things. What made you lean? Because um, I, I know you first as an MC, mm -hmm. then the graffiti. What made you lean into getting into to, to graffiti? I feel like going back to the garage thing, you had a name and everyone that had a name, if it was like a your alias or whatever, mm. that was your tag and your MC name or your DJ name and your yeah. tag, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was, yeah, everyone was on that back in the day. Everyone had a tag. And then I think some people kind of dropped off as they stopped doing music and didn't bother. Mm -hmm. Some people persisted with the graph thing and some people persisted with the music and some people just stopped the whole lot. But yeah. at the time, it was just, yeah, everyone had a tag mm. and... It was the same name that they'd be under. I used to be like MC Ideal or something as a child, and that was like, I used to write Ideal and then realised there was an idea. For more, I came up to West to go to yeah, skate yeah. in PlayStation Skate Park or whatever, and I was like, oh, I can't write that. It's only one letter of difference, and then <laughs> changed it, and then a few years of rubbish <laughs> names before I got this name I have now, which is, yeah, I'm happy with this name, but hold tight, Paul Williams, for uh, naming me. This guy I used to work I'll with. Hold Paul Williams. Legend. Yeah, he once uh, was stressing out when I was working in orders in Croydon, and he said, oh, you need a, I need a new name, right? And I was like, yeah, and he's like, cool. The next morning he came to me, he's like, I've got it. And I was like, what? And he's like, your new rap name. I was like, go on. And he went, Oliver Sutton. And I was like, that's it, sold. So, so yeah, fire. I always tell that story, because that's, that's, you've got to give props to people that, like that, do you know what I mean? thousand percent. People would forget, like, people like that. Do you know what I mean? He's, I haven't seen him for years, but I know he's out there doing his thing and still listening to hip-hop and stuff, mm. and, yeah, he still supports where he can, but I'll always shout him out for yeah. the Yeah, for just for name. connect, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, rolling with Tizer, ID Hold Tight Ties. Yes, out to Tizer. Yeah, um, yeah like, that's strong pedigree, brother. Yeah, Kings. I met him many years ago outside one of my events. Obviously, we were always around Brixton a lot, so... We've seen each other around for years, but yeah, over the last, I don't know, five or six years, we've got really tight just from painting and also having similar schedules where we can, we haven't got that much responsibility. So, yeah. weekdays when there's not much on, just go and paint or he'll come to a gig or support the music. Was there a gig with you the other, I think Bill VIP was there as well. I can't remember. Yeah, he when was. That? that was at the cause, that was full clip at Slippy Skills. That was a wicked event. Um, that will be Looked back. great. Yeah, it was dope. They will be, we will be doing that again, actually. Um, we had a big lineup. I think he's got quite a few booked up. We did have a few booked up, and I think he's doing a similar kind of like online series to go with it. It's like Full Clip magazine. It was going to be a magazine that kind of ended up being a. He was doing the Jago in Dalston before lockdown. Yes. And then obviously the cause in Tottenham has been. Have you been up there? No. It's wicked, man. It's, Where about is it? It's right by Tottenham House Station in the middle of a building site. It's like the last bit that's not been touched. Oh, I know it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they have like jungle rave on a Monday. It's mental. It's all seated. That's mad. But like, it's obviously they've. You wouldn't have even thought it was there. And they've just adapted the venue into a thing called Costa del Tottenham. So it's just a big outdoor space, roof over it. Costa del Tottenham. Yeah, just wicked food. Really nice food up there. Drinks you can smoke at, and all this, all the areas. It's just, it's kind of just like a massive beer garden with wicked sound system. Banging. And no neighbours, so you can just go in and. Um, yeah, they're just fully adapting every single time there's a change in Policy, lockdown or yeah. tier or whatever they call it. Can't keep up. But uh, they'll just adapt and change it and make a bit more space and accommodate for the rules. So, oh, that's fucking great. And it's really nice. It's, the security are lovely, all the staff are lovely. Yeah, it was wicked, man. The underground always thrives, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. It's like, there's no... people. I mean, you know, we go about this. You know the record stores and the chip shops and stuff. Yeah. Like, chip shops a great example, actually. You know the adaptation. You'd have thought ever yeah. that a chip shop would then become the hip hop mecca, the primary hip hop spot yeah. of London. It, it, but people, you know, that that was the old record shop model. The, the beer gardens are now the raves. Yeah, and it's like people just adapt, don't they? They work with sure. the, 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 the the mood. There was even girls doing like footwork, like full on like dance routines, but lying down on a bench, so they were not breaking the rules. But like they were. <laughs> breaking. And then, like, stand, like sitting back up and crying with laughter at how jokes that it was to do their routine, but <coughs> upside down. That was hilarious. <coughs> Sit up and drink some more wine and go again. I it's have great. to tell you, I do miss, I do miss a powerful sound system, though, bro. Yeah, it's proper big there, man. It's loud. Isn't it? Wicked. Yeah. So, Which jungle, is funny. drum and bass head, do you like jungle too? I do. I yeah. mean, I've never sessioned it. I find it's because it's like I've, I was rapping on sort of garage and 
grime stuff. Mm. Uh, and then hip hop stuff. And I find like I like riding half time, but I've never had that sort of mm. that verse for the ju- for mm. the drums. I've never written one. So but I do enjoy it. And I feel like even this year where I've been around it a lot more in certain situations yeah. where there's just been a lot of like it's almost like being like, right, if we're gonna do it, let's just go all out and do the drums. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I've uh, kind of opened my ear a bit to it this year, but I've always sort of dabbled. When it was pirate radio days, it was obviously back to back sort of yeah. Shows that were garage and grime, and then it would always quite often end up in sort of jungle and drums at the end by the end of people's shows. But yeah, but yeah, no, it's not my I'm not like a wouldn't call myself a raver, but I'm more into like funk, soul, mm. reggae, intimate sort mm. of little do's with real passionate sort of more uh specialist stuff. Yeah. Because I think a lot of, I mean, hey, right, I'm not getting spicy now, this isn't a spicy comment, it's not designed for it anyway, but when. I remember when I first got into like the more hardcore UK hip hop stuff. Yeah. Kind of, it's very similar to when you first get into garage music, I guess, or even early jungle drum bass. For some people, it's those are like entry holes into yeah. discovering a later scene. Definitely. Like you're saying about funk and jazz, they are all inspired by that. But you've kind of got to go through them entry holes first to discover the. The details, aren't you? Yeah, it's like going backwards, isn't it? Just sample-based music. And as well, uh, spying samples I and mean, collecting records to, to sample. Yeah. Do you do that still? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. buy records for every bloody purpose. It's pretty mental. I'm trying to have a clear out at the moment before my house falls yeah, down. That's not going to happen quick. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's taken ages. But um, I was going through stuff the other day. I might have seen it on my story. It was like a dog training record. And I was like, God, where the hell have I got that? I was like... I'm not going to get rid of it though. I know I'm going to need that at some point. It's going to be like, <laughs> I'm going to need a, a sort of certain command and it's going to be on there. Yeah, yeah. But um, Has it been transferred to like hard disks and USBs yet? Is that... No, I'm such a caveman. I've literally got one hard drive with a load of old photos on and then a laptop that's dying. My boy Kurt Cataract's fixing up another laptop for me at the moment with some newer software and stuff so I can get back on the beats. But I've just been using Fruity Loops free on an old Toshiba laptop for years. Dude, so. I, I swear. Whatever Holy this you album's need. on there as well. Yeah. I've made on that as well. You know what, I think with restriction comes that creative thing. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've some people laugh at me. Even like, I, <laughs> there's this one button to export the whole song as stems yeah. and it's quicker and I can take it to any... The, where I record with Strange Neighbor at the Revolg studio, he uses Fruit Loops and it's obviously a newer one than mine because no one uses free anymore. Yeah. It's like 98 or something it was made. Sick. But I see it's like an SP or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm old Thousand percent. <laughs> Thousand percent. <laughs> and, uh, but, yeah, where I go there and then it goes to master at Kurt's quite a lot of the time and he's on a newer, even newer Fruity. So it's, as long as you're going for, to a newer one, you can just zip the package yeah. and it will come through as it is on my computer and I can work on it there. But... um. That button ain't getting pushed, is it? You're doing uh, it manually. I wasn't. I wasn't even bouncing <laughs> stems. I was just bouncing the whole thing and just like sort of mastering one track. But now, yeah, that's, yeah, that's why this album's like, bro, that is that lot. is like OG old school. I love oh, it. It's terrible. It's it was. They worked for some things, especially working with like when I was recording the last EP it was with Moriarty, and he's a wizard on the boards anyway. So <laughs> he uh, made it bang, but nothing is bang like this because we've had all the stems perfectly built out and then. I went to Crossbone T this time because Kurt had some um, computer issues for the, a couple of months when we needed it to be mixed. But I'll take Kurt, hold tight Crossbone T. Yeah, yeah it sounds is. wicked, man. Both from amazing engineers, mm. very reasonable. That's and one thing. I, that's the first thing I said to you when I was listening to yeah. it. I was like, dude, the, never mind the videos fire, but that yeah, even through the phone it sounded alright. Mix sounded good. The vocals are sharp. Yeah, it's for sure. To think that you're doing it in one. Time. You know, there's loads of ultimate. I mean, like, how do you? How did these people do it back in the day? I mean, it's not. It, it just because it's available doesn't mm. make it d- definitive. Yeah. I like people that do that old school shit. You yeah, know? for sure. I, I feel that's uh, definitely pushed me. But then where I have seen people working on other programs, yeah. I had Fruity Loops 8, which is still well old, but I made like quite a lot of stuff on there and then that laptop completely died and I lost most of the beats. I put out two beat tapes this year of stuff I found through lockdown on a hard drive. What? It was just, just stuff I bounced as ideas and just mm. put it all out. Didn't even bother mixing or anything, just did a little artwork and put two out this year. Isn't that liberating? Yeah, it's nice yeah. just to get that out. Was I don't received, like sitting was good, yeah? Yeah, it went really well. I did a limited C- a CD of the first one for those CD collectors. I f- this is fascinating to me, CD mm. collectors. <laughs> like, I love 
yeah. these dudes, like someone came up to me, like a random dude, said, oh, anything, you message me saying, anything you do, tell me, put anything you have on CD, I want, I want the lot. Wow. And then he said, can you sign it to the wife? She's really upset and stressed out at the moment through this COVID malarkey. You know? Oh, that's, that's And then he messaged me, like, he sent me a video mm. and he was like, Thank you, Oliver. Wife really enjoyed that, and the, and he was like, "You're in good company." And he walked up his stairs, and it's like this racked out wall on uh, at the top of the stairs, all CDs, oh, that's all sick. in alphabet colours. Like, you're in good company. And I think I had like Overlord X next to me, and then OC or something on the other side. And it was like in the O section. He was like, "Show me what was either side of my oh. little chunk of CDs." And he's like, "You're in good company. Don't worry." <laughs> I was like, "This guy, <laughs> killing it. It fascinates me. Just people wanting that physical and something mm. to read and hold and yeah, yeah, yeah." Send out a few stickers and a bit of promo with everything for like, yeah, just to give people that package that yeah. they want as like collectors and. Passionate. But what is it with you, break collectors? Like you, some of these breaks, hold tight, Mister Thing. Yeah, like, mate. The King. amount of times I've just stuck in a record shop yeah. with, with Mark back in the day, but he would flick through things and he go, "Yo, you should check that out." Why? Because you know, there's a break on da 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 track, but this is a whole album, and it's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Started my radio show last week with something that he pulled out in the shop and showed my boss. <laughs> like, my boss showed me because he thought it was like more up my street. But, yeah, he's uh, something else, man. I mean, I've... Is it the physical thing you guys like? Yeah, I love the physical thing. I like to be able... Like I was talking, going back to what I was saying about jazz and yeah. figuring out the, the collaborative efforts and who wrote yeah. what. And it goes even across, like, all genres, really. There's certain people that have just touched mm. so many different sounds. But it's just having something in your hand to read and the artwork while you put the record on, that feeling of putting the needle on, the little connection noise and the crackle as it comes. It's just so many levels to it. And then sitting back. Mm. Spiritual, like, isn't it? Yeah, reading about the album and their uh, their approach to the artwork. And mm. yeah, it's like Halloween when I was playing, like I took a sound effects of death and horror with me to uh, the chip shop and every now and again threw a, a little scream <laughs> or a creaky door in the mix and stuff. <laughs> Love it. And uh, on the back of that, they talk about how they got all the sounds from like chopping, like abusing large white cabbages and all this. It's probably like classic British comedy, like we hacked them with cleavers, stabbed them with hot pokers, which resulted in some great noises and so some and a lovely bit of coleslaw for the team. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Bomb. But it's just you wouldn't see that on yeah. on, a, on an online or like, digi file, would you? I like that, that sort of physical copy yeah. to have a read, and get some yeah. info off. And the intel of that as well. Yeah. I love it when I feel like I've discovered mm. a bit of information that, you know, might be useful at a pop quiz or some shit. Yeah, I'm not Do one of them guys that's super up on the brakes still, even though I know a lot. Oh, I know nothing, brother. I know no I've got a bunch in there that M Mark, Mr. Finn, gave me yonks ago. And I think like, he came around for podcasts and I even tried to give them back to him. He's like, oh, yeah. Oh. I've got 40 copies of each of those. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To go with his shelter addiction. I need to go to his shop, actually. Mm. Wicked name. Mm. Pressing Matters. Pressing Matters. So sick. What record store do you work at? Sole Proprietors, Brixton Hill. Brixton. 64, Elm Park, yes. Uh, small independent. Been there three, four years now. See, we're talking to somebody that lives it and breathes it. You know what I mean? Don't fuck around around here. It's, <laughs> it's fucking great. Yeah, it's a great shop. Hold tight, Goose um, is the boss. Um, yeah, it's been amazing. They've done some real good installs there as well. Had Skinny Man perform. Cheese like London it. did a night with um, Mad Lineup, actually. Cosmo Pike. I think it was the same night. One Man and Skinny Man on like a, a lineup <laughs> in a record shop on a Friday. In Brixton? Yeah, in the Brixton's back roads. pumping, isn't it? yeah. In the back roads, um, right out the way, next to a little tiny... It's a tiny parade of shops, yeah. corner shop, little pub that's been refurbished. It's gone a bit swanky now, but still not bad. And then they've got uh, old school barbers there called Rough Cuts, where Tyson used to get his hair cut yeah. when he was in town. And Yeah, a radio station opposite, Cat Radio, just from someone's house online. But it's just such a nice community of people. And obviously where we're in the heart of a lot of old sound systems, where they mm. were the other side of Tulsa Estate and stuff. Mm. And... Tragically, people have passed. They've been known as the place that deals best and pays well and is honest. Mm. So a lot of amazing collections from like original sound systems in the area. Plus your records in there. Yeah, it's dangerous. It's dangerous trying to come home with a small wage rather than just a bag of tunes. <laughs> I was going to say. You can imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've got a vault behind the jump that I've been trying to work through. But yes, yeah, you just got the first dibs. You got privilege. Privilege, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's great. But it's also expensive. Yeah, yeah, dangerous. I think that was the final straw. I think I was like kind of happy with the way I was collecting it and at the rate I was collecting. And then 
over since I've been working at the shop the last couple of years, it's just been, uh, yeah, it got intense. <laughs> do you think it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy mm. that if you live it to that extreme, you become it and therefore everything you've created up till now, it uh, leans towards a synergy, like uh, things magnetised coming your way. Yeah. Like, of course you're going to end up getting a, a huge record, a vast amount of records, you put yourself in that position. And reverse engineer it, you put yourself in another position before that made that position. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. It's, uh, <laughs> like you said as well, if you, when you're in the same property for a while, you, things do build up. You're like, oh, I've got loads of space. And then before you know it, you're tunnelling your way to your bed to... Uh... Yeah, don't know what you mean, <laughs> mate. Don't know what you mean. Order some hell, season 10. But then you justify <clears throat> it, don't you? Because once you've got all them records, you're like, yeah, well, I've just made... So the impact. I just made this yeah. album, and it, in your head, it's like a flick of a I switch. I want to send it to my landlady and go, "This is why." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what I've been working on? Like, like it almost made me like defensive when she's moaning about amount of stuff in the house. She's right. I've got to get stuff out, and I have been working on it. But but sometimes they just need. Listen, in all seriousness, sometimes people like that just need. What it is is you give them that, and you say, "Well, it's your." You allow me to do this is contributive to this, and it kind of gives yeah. them She's a, been an supportive. energy. Yeah, yeah definitely. I, th- I will definitely speak to her about it and show her what what's been happening because she always Fruit to the she all, yeah she always does ask what's what's been going on. She's amazing to be honest, mm. and I probably have taken the mic and been sort of that trying to be self employed <laughs> skimpy rap dude for years, but but yeah, we're getting there. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Twenty twenty one, we're going to be balling. Yeah, baby. <laughs> who's on the, Who's on the album? Um, uh, it's all my beats, like I said. Um, I've got G Bag, amazing MC mm. from Croydon as well. Okay. Strange Neighbour, who runs Revolg Records. That, that was the first single that came out. Um, then I've got Sus Bully, who's another Croydon MC. We've been trying to work with him for like 10 years. These Cronk Dons. Legends. Cronk's in the house. Yeah. And uh, who else is on there? Um, Fiber. I don't know if you heard of Fiber. Fiber no. Optics works at Crate Division a lot. Amazing. MC from West, nice, sick dude, lovely dude. See, there's a the name you need to check out. Super talented, yeah, yeah. P H Y B A. Check him out, amazing. And a guy that's very, very underground and impossible to track down most of the time. This guy called Twenty Five. He's done work with Jake Milliner. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's. I have to send you his link. Yeah, as well. for he's, sure. He's a child of Dilla, and he's now working with Slum Village, oh, okay. Farrah Monch. Right, right. He did a beat challenge. You know, like, oh, check this beat out. If you want to do something on it, send it back. I'll post my favourites. Lupe Fiasco jumped on the beat challenge the other day, so that's the sort of level he's at. That's crazy. But like, he's another dude. He's not really out in the scene. He's just had a baby, and he's just kind of laying low. But he's working the internet really well to mm. his advantage and smashing the beats. It's so funky. But um, he did Hawkeye stuff. Which goes back stuff. to what you were saying about people just yeah, coming out and exactly. surfacing yeah. in these times. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then he did my, a beat. He did a beat. What were you saying? He's done. Hawkhouse stuff, right, right. another amazing group from South London. It kind of disappeared a bit, but uh, Demay, the vocalist, she's just dropped her debut project on Touching Bass. He's done a beat on there, and Wooloo has, and a few other heads. It's real nice, sort of South London flavour. But um, his dad was in the Pasadenas, and then the no. brother, the other brother, yeah, and their uncles, obviously. And then one of the other brothers is part of Kano's live team. His other brother, Jesse's a good friend of mine as well. He's a DJ. And then the cousin, Robio, is like, what? tours the world like teaching dance and stuff and she's part of, like works up like, breaking convention other people that's like, so a mad amazing family but yeah i'm working with jake as well on some stuff he's done a remix for the album and another project that we've got coming out in the new year on a 45 um but yeah uh who else my cousin jay ok james is on guitar doing a solo sick dave core on synth i don't know if you remember dave core you probably would have bumped heads back in the day around probably, yeah. um used to be called blue movies or dj mech did you make, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Legend. Legend. Yeah, 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 he's, yeah, he's still active. He's in a jazz funk quartet with my cousin and Mr. Gats and Johnny Drop called The Expansions and he's also playing session keys for loads of people and doing his thing, teaching and that. So sick. This yeah. is the culture going on. This tapestry. Is, that's who I first worked with, Dave. He taught me a lot. He put me on DJ and he taught me how to DJ. Gave me my first, like, like sort of comps that I could take oh, out and geez, play. Shit, yeah. Produced my first three projects, recorded them put them out on his label at the time, Derby Records, 2006, we did two projects and then one in 2008. And oh, yeah. he's done a beat here and there for me since, but 
It was so good to get him. I actually called him out on the hook, saying I lift you up like Dave Core on the synth. And then Jay went, we've got to get Dave on it. And I was like, yeah, we should, but time's pressed. And he goes, just, just ask him. And he, by Monday, sent it on the Thursday. By the Monday, we had the whole track. That I said, do a solo, but he just added... So you just start started to finish. duty on it. Yeah, went in. I'll play that later. It's a special one, that one. So we're going to shoot a video for that as well. And that's the one with Fibre and 25. And, yeah, 25 is a very elusive dude, but amazing MC from, like, Croydon Way as well. And this, this, this is a scene in itself, you know. This is it's crazy to think. I mean, I've had genres pass through here. But it's still... The thing is with the UK hip-hop thing is, I, you know, I, I am that you know at mm. its core and when i hear of new things and i'm like yeah like it's 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 like a um it's like a fine wine man mm. it's just like it just gets better every year yeah there's so much stuff coming out as well so and much stuff and new names loads of new names that's the other thing like i swear the same people that moan about not doing anything are the same people that moan about nothing good coming out these days do you know what i mean yeah. shutters are on do you know what I mean like yeah. like can't see what's happening and like veteranitis veteranitis some, something i'll never suffer from but is Yo, rife in it but i'm i hated i hate myself for not being more active so i'm gonna hate everyone else yeah, yeah, yeah. You know it's, I mean? it's an it's an it's a it's an eye into the soul of themselves yeah you were saying about the uh the whole uh social aspect of 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 hip-hop and cultures on the whole but uh, you know there's people out there you can see the you can see the heart in someone like yourself who who embraces not only being in other people's company and other people's parties, but creating those party environments. And, you know, it's a give and take, and you've got to be able Love to it. give and take, haven't you? Yeah, that's my favourite thing, man, putting on events and having the people there. Like you said, the social thing. There's been times of people, you know, it, it, we all have, like, social anxiety at times, and especially in sort of certain areas and certain scenes, like, cool, wannabe cool idiots that make... Lord like, of the Fly... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, like I've hung out with you for like hours one day, but next time I see you, I'm just going to be like, oh, sorry, do I know, do I know you? Them mm -hmm. types, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But that's never an environment I'm trying to create. If people mm -hmm. come to my events, they'll meet people. Some people like don't turn up, and then the ones that do, it's like, oh, my mate flopped to me, I'm just going to come on my own. Mm -hmm. Like, cool, that's what it's yeah. about. You're going to have 20 new best mates by the end of the night, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And the squad just grows and then... Yeah. Talking of which, Carnival... Yeah, when man. we were down at Carnival a couple of years back. That was heavy. That was heavy. Apart from Apex, ruined my day. Hold oh. to Apex Zero. <laughs> gave me what I thought was Evian. It was... I said to him oh, like, recently... No. Oh, it's Ray and Nephews. He went, no, it was something stronger than Ray. I was like, what? I didn't even know there was such a thing. Oh, shit. What did they give you? Some mental rum. Because I know he drinks, but I didn't know... I, I usually just see him with a Guinness. And like he, he didn't drink when we first met. But I thought, he, uh, obviously everyone goes with a little ham for... for Carney, yeah. Carney, so he said, I, I was like, oh, you're right. And he's like, you look like you need this. And I was like, oh, thanks, man. It was like about that much left in this little bottle of Evian. That was I was it. Like, oh, my God. I managed to f randomly find Russell, who runs the White Horse in Brix in Peckham. And he, he's like, right, I'm getting you out of here. <laughs> Took me, I think, to Paddington Station, to a pub in the station. I think it was a Spoons, and bought me chips and Guinness to bring me back to life. Were you just wrecked? Were you Ruined. But then I went and played a dance hall set at a chip shop for an hour and ended up hanging out with Drex Moore and, uh, and Rodney. Drex. Me, Drex and Rodney ended up in a lock-in <laughs> after. Oh, mate. Thanks to the chips and Guinness for the strength. So hold tight, Russell, for bringing me through. Hold tight, hold tight, Drex. <laughs> Drex was really was, that whole day, he was... He was the Pied Piper. Yeah, just <laughs> connecting. Tell me what was weird about that day. Tizer was 20 feet from us the whole day. Didn't see him at Me didn't neither. And he just landed that morning or the night before straight from the States, I think. And yeah, he went straight there. That's right. And he was right with us the whole day. And mm. I didn't bother hollering him because I thought he was still away. And then I found out a couple of days after that he was at Abishanti the whole day and we didn't even see him. Didn't even and we were see like, him. <laughs> the person we met through was like right, right next to us. You're right next to us. You couldn't have written that. Carnival. Didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, Carnival. Exactly. People. Sea of heads. Yeah, just people connecting. Love it. Yeah, it was so good. I missed it this year, man. Mm. First time ever. Yeah, no. It's so, yeah, just heartbreaking. But, uh, you know. Terrible. More power to the future, my brother. So yeah, I cannot the, wait. The future is the album. The future is the... Yeah, uh, future's the album. Revolve Records. Revolve.co.uk for the album. Um... Yeah, it's nice to have a debut self-produced thing out. There's obviously the back catalogue on the Bandcamp, mm -hmm. everything that I've done in the past, the mixtapes, the albums with other people. 
Um, yeah, sitting on a couple of singles. I'm working on a production album as well. Trying to get through these beats on the laptop, but mm. anything that's decent, I'm just mm. gonna salvage, bounce off in my new technique where I've ripped, like, figured out mm. the one exclusive button that I've <laughs> always denied. And uh, so I've been bouncing out of beats. I've got sort of 10, 12 pro track projects. I've um, already got a track with Cracker John, Crossbone Tease actually jumped on something. I got him out of rap retirement. Yeah. You know, he's like, oh, oh, I don't really rap anymore. 24 hours later, I had the, the, the track with all the stems. Yeah, yeah, all mapped out. I, 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 I had a go. Yeah. Oh, you, you shat on it, did you mean? You killed it, yeah. <laughs> Thought you would. <laughs> Shouts to Crossbone. And um, got two joints of 25 on there as well, getting them rare verses. Oh, and um, yeah, Strange Neighbours on one. I think Anyway to God's going to do one or two. You listening uh, to this? Confucius, this is activity. hopefully. Yeah, I've got a big list of people that took Jeez. stuff at the start, so I need to chase that up. Once this album's out this week, that's going to be the next thing to the focus on. The hardest bit is chasing, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. It but feels like you're trying to herd sheep. Yeah, everything in. exactly. But then I figured out that I am actually halfway there now. So mm -hmm. once, and also I've done a producing album for Fiber as well this year, which is coming oh, out yes. soon. So yeah, fucking hell, that's, man. I'm really excited about that. Michael Parkinson's on it. Woo! And a couple of other features. Michael Parkinson's. Yeah, Hold Tight Parky. Oh, gee. Yeah, legend. And, um, and a couple other heads, so I'm really excited about that. Um, but yeah, it's nice to get the beats out, man. I'm looking forward to getting this new setup back from Kurt and getting on the beats again. Um, got a double A side, well, the sort of A and a, a remix B coming out on a sort of limited 45 in the new year. Right, so if people want to check this out, where do they go? They go to your Instagram? Instagram, I post the updates and stuff. That's Cronxdon, yeah. C-R-O-N-X-D-O-N. Oliver Sudden, if you type mm -hmm. in that, you'll get it um, at Cronkston. And then oliversudden.bandcamp.com has all the back catalogue to stream and to download for like nothing or super cheap. And then the Spotify is there, but it's not exclusively mine. It's not a proper artist page. That's another thing I'm working on at the moment, just making sure that everything's linked because there was a label called Oliver Sudden R Records, I think, uh, that done like a world music sort of thing. I don't know if they're still active, but some of their catalogue has crossed over under my name. Right. So I'm just trying to... So yes, it's me. Demarcation. Is, yeah, exactly. This is me. This isn't me. This is, so I have a, a s accurate collection on yeah. Spotify of yeah. stuff to stream on all the features and other bits and bobs. And you know what we're saying here? It's like you know, I always steer people to check out the music, but it's not you know, basic shit. This is this is the living embodiment of, of culture right here. Get involved, support the cause, because my guy is doing. You clearly he's doing a shit ton of stuff, and uh, I know you guys will dig it. You know what I mean? Having a go. Having a go. Yeah. Keeping the keeping the culture upright. Salute, man. You Imagine. too. Imagine. Thank you for having me. It's been sick. Bro, it's been wicked. It's Good been great up. catching up again. Yeah, man. Really. We've got to go and paint. We've got to get you painting next. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Something for them to hate on. No, <laughs> you trust can me. <laughs> start with the feel and yeah. we'll go from there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Stay lucky, Oliver. Top nice boy. One. You too, man. Killer, killer podcast. We are like him was out of fashion, right? Don't forget to share. Sharing's caring and all that business. Don't talk to any strange ones. We'll see you later. Peace. <laughs>